call the meeting of the ARPA Assessment Committee, uh, the regular meeting of Wednesday, May 11th to order at 4.43 p.m. Um, the first order of business is to amend if necessary and then accept the agenda. Does anyone have any amendments to make to the agenda? I'll just make one amendment, uh, maybe under, well, it would have to be new item six, um, new business, and just note that we received a piece of correspondence. Any other? Okay. I'll entertain a motion to accept the agenda. So moved. Right, we've got Ruth and Barbara. All in favor, raise your hand or say aye. Any opposed? And seeing none, the motion carries. The next item on the agenda is to approve the minutes of the May 4th regular meeting. Did everyone have a chance to read the minutes and are there any amendments to make to the, to the minutes? And if none, I'll entertain a motion to accept the minutes. Thanks, Barbara, approve the minutes, sorry. A second? Second. Thanks, Glenn. All in favor, raise your hand or say aye. aye. Any opposed? Seeing none, the motion carries unanimously. Next item on the agenda is public comment. Let the record reflect there are no members of the public here with us today. So we'll dive right into the old business, uh, which is the report. And uh, we have um, received uh, Patricia's um, well-drafted recommendations section. Before we dive into that, did anyone else do anything with the report outline? I did a little bit, but not completely, my section on the methodology. So if you go into our Google Drive, you will see that it's in the final report outline. And Patricia, after the meeting, if you would send me the Word doc of your draft, I'll incorporate that. I, um, I can put it in the Google Drive and send it to you. It's not this document here. Yeah, either way, I mean, what I would do is incorporate it into the report. Okay. So if you send it in Word, I'll just cut and paste it, but it's fine if you want to put it in there as a standalone too. I, um, <clears throat> I made some notes, um, you know, before I came here. And um, there's nothing in the notes that conflict with anything in here. It's just a matter of um, probably condensing things or maybe saying things in a different way. Joe, do they, are they related to recommendations? They are uh, specific, they are, yes. Okay. It, it's, it, I guess you'd put it under the heading of recommendations. Um, yeah, recommendations. Okay, great. So. What I would suggest is that we then start to discuss Patricia's draft. And in the context of that, if you wanna, you know, if you wanna share your comments, that would be great. Sure. Okay. So, sorry about my phone. Okay. Anyone have thoughts that they wanna share? Um. I have a couple just, and I hadn't seen this before today, but. Wasn't ready before today. Okay, so on, <laughs> under number one, where you say aid to individuals and families that experience financial losses. I'm wondering if we can't change that to economic harm because economic harm is the terminology that's utilized in the final rule and yeah, that keeps it good with that. Time. I so also do you like want that. To do that for businesses as well. Yes, and um, economic form. economic harm. harm. And down here, where you've got the committee's discovery process, etc., blah blah blah. And then the second yeah. sentence at the end, where it says "suffered COVID losses," I think that might sound like deaths. So I think we're better off changing that to "suffered economic harm due to the COVID nineteen pandemic." I'm sorry, where are you? Down here, second. Oh, okay. Where she yeah. has Suffered. COVID losses. Suffered I think economic. using 
suffered due to COVID. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic. I think using the language of ARPA as much as possible would be helpful. Right. So COVID-19. COVID-19 pandemic, yeah. Um, and I feel a little guilty because I'm such a little wordsmither, but <laughs> on the very on number six, where you you say if applications in any category fall short, I think it might read better if it says if total funding requests in any category fall short of the established pool amount instead of applications fall short if the total funding requests in any category fall short. Yeah, that makes it a little clearer. Yeah. And then um, this is probably going to be up for discussion, but I take exception to that very last sentence where it says, well, the other automatically rolls to the KDRP yeah, that was pool. something that I had in my notes that yeah, someone I, recommended. I would, I would just remove that because that is a pool. So could I, be rolled over into any other category, category which period. includes the. Okay. Yeah. I just, I'm a little concerned about the KBFD pool. I mean, clearly, because they do have money in the bank account and they, they do have the ability to buy some of the stuff that they've asked us to fund. So I just want to be careful to not um, turn on too much. I, I, I kind of disagree with that because regardless of the, if they have that much money in the bank, this was what the survey showed that people want that. So therefore, they should be getting that. I mean, regardless of how much they have. So they have it. So they can use it for something else. I sort of, so when I saw on Facebook that they had already purchased the stair chair, um, I had that same reaction of like, well, wait, you know, ARPA was going to, but I sort of agree with Joe in some ways because I, you know, we're clearly for individuals and businesses, we are reimbursing their economic harm. And I don't know that it should be an absolute bar, you know, to give an award that, um, that pays for something that's already been purchased if there is a connection. That's where I get a little bit stuck because I'm not sure that we drew a, a connection between the ambulance stair chair and COVID. You know, we did for the workout room, for the emergency communications yes. equipment. Uh, and so I'm, I'm stuck there. I don't know how I feel about it, but I also, you know, my initial reaction of we shouldn't be, uh, we shouldn't be directing funds to something that's already been purchased. I, I don't really think that that is, I don't think that that would hold true for every single one of the grant requests that we've received. So I, I don't know that that should be the deciding factor. Now they, um, they went ahead and purchased this, you know, just now. Yeah, I mean, they, they needed it, week. so yeah. they purchased it. So, but that doesn't, that Plus, doesn't we, mean I, I have reservations about cart going to the fire department. I'm just going to put it out there. Yeah, I think, I'm in that boat for sure. I, I think, yes, the survey said a lot of people wanted it, but I think they're getting a fair shake here. Well, so in Patricia's draft, the stair chair is not enumerated, it says equipment. And we could just leave it at that. Okay. I yeah, don't know. Well, I, I that, like, that, than that would be my suggestion. But I don't know if others agree. Something else. No, I don't. Yeah, I think equipment's fair enough. But I, I, yeah. I think we're doing. I'm fine with equipment. I do too. Yeah. We're doing. You know, so I, I personally have reservations about the gym. Is that their like number one need a gym on site? I understand that. You know, it, it's good for them to be fit and all. Um, but. Is that, you know, is that a top priority for them? I don't know. To reach out and ask for it. <laughs> yeah. That is actually. Well, I, mean, I think started. in some ways it uh, <coughs> inspires camaraderie. It might actually be a draw for That's some true. people in the That's community true. to volunteer. So there, I mean, there are some good things yeah. that come out of it. Mm -hmm. 
I think we should just go with what we have. I mean, we spent a lot of time, you know, um, voting on this and, yeah. and selecting these things to kind of like change them at the last minute. That's, it, you know, it doesn't make, Okay. Yeah. Can I? Okay. I have a little more wordsmithing. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so we're we're uh, to the bottom of the first page, and we're removing the second part of that sentence that says automatically yes. moved to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now Any other beginning at the top of page two. Okay. So under the the third slash under number one, the second half of that sentence where it says and or household income guidelines should be set. We need to take the word should out of there because if we leave it up to the Board of Selectmen to do anything, it's going to just get- I thought down. you were going to bring the criteria right. to Well, I think you, you can- You said you would, and I was going to add that in now. Right, I just think we can change it to um, are recommended as on the application and in the compliance section. We can just change it to some wording like that, but- To what? Uh, that the oh, so, must list okay, as wait. their primary residence in and our household income guidelines as are recommended uh, on the suggested application form. Mm -hmm. okay. yes. yes. And just to address what you just said about, <laughs> I know I promised I would bring it today, but there was just no way I could get to it between Friday and today with that budget hearing on Friday night and three Zoom meetings between then and today. But I will get it done. I will get my part done. Don't is, is this the individual application that you're referring to now? That's what we're, well, that's what I was answering Patricia because I told her that I would do it and I haven't done it yet. Oh. I haven't completed it yet. So, um, all right, so these, um, People that apply, they're going to be getting a grant. Is that how this is going to work? The uh, the, the Pan Arpa grant is going to be created, so they can... all the money that's distributed is it's distributed a is considered a grant, yes. and I have to numerically identify every single grant that's issued because I have to actually report on every single grant that's issued. Right. Well, I have um, I have a question on that, and here's why, because I um. I'm going to be getting a grant from uh, from DDS for one hundred and twenty dollars. One hundred and twenty dollars. Okay? okay. So I read their um, their criteria as to what they they ask for uh, for documentation and so forth. And one of the things, I mean, it's it's, <laughs> it's very lengthy, and this is for one hundred and twenty dollars, mind you. So um, one of the things that they do um, ask for is either a social security number or a um, employment identification number. So is that gonna be, and this is for, because uh, this is gone through the IRS, the treasury of the IRS. So is that have to be included in the uh, applications well, also? It, to some degree, it will be automatic because I'm gonna request copies of tax returns. So there'll be social security numbers right there. But what if somebody doesn't do um, uh, taxes? If they aren't filing taxes with the federal government, then they're not eligible. They're not going to be eligible. But there are um, okay. There, uh, I don't know exactly what they're what it's called. Resident aliens who are people that uh, are not citizens, but they are in this country. We had this discussion during the last meeting, and the. Upshot was that because these were federal grants coming out that we felt comfortable making eligibility, you know, at making it an eligibility factor that you would submit your tax return. And if you didn't file taxes, you would maybe go to a different organization for a grant funding. I mean, this is certainly not the only source of assistance that exists uh, in society today. Well, as I say, I'm just bringing this up because who knew? I was not aware of any of this stuff. But then all of a sudden, there's um, a grant funding for $120, and in, in the, in these forms have to be filled out for that amount for, for the state, the state of Connecticut. So, Joe, 
Are you saying you think that we should change it and open it up uh, eligibility mm -hmm. to those who might not file taxes? No, I'm not saying it should be okay. changed. I'm just asking if this is has to be stipulated on because there's no individual form that we're looking at. But there will be because that is what we're discussing as being part of the appendices. And Barbara is telling you that uh, the application should attach a tax, uh, you know, a tax return. Well, I don't know, maybe Ruth, because you're in, you do nonprofits. Is this something that they they require? What do you mean? If they have to know if they need like a number or a uh, like a social security number or employment uh, identification we're, we're number for individuals, not not that comes not through us, comes through any grants that are given or money given comes through social services. But I think unless we're talking about opening this up, you know, unless there's somebody who's making an argument that we should make this grant available to residents of Kent that don't pay taxes, then I, I think this is a moot discussion. Well, not really, because the, uh, the committee has agreed to include residents and individuals. Right. For, Who for pay taxes. Who submit tax returns. Right. Okay, but I, I believe that they ask you for that on your tax return. Yes, Anyhow. that is Barbara's point, is that if she asks for a tax return, that it will have a social security number or an EIN on it. So it's the same thing. I mean, whether or not she puts a space on the application form where you can fill in your social security number, we will be, or not we, but she will be collecting tax forms that have that information. So yes, I mean, the, the answer is yes, we're requiring that number, but we're just not, we may not put it on the form because why fill it in more than once? Do you see what I'm saying? Um, I guess, I mean, it's, it's, it's a matter of like how it's processed and all that kind well, of stuff. What like, is your concern? My concern is that I, I have to supply all this right. information. And so will these people. Yeah, well, th this is what I'm asking about. If this is 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 part of yes, what yes. has to be on the application, right. That's what that was saying. my concern. Yeah. Right, right. Informational. You may I would not say. see a form that looks exactly like what you filled out. It is information that will be required, but it may not look exactly like the DDS form because people design different forms. Right, but it will require a tax return. Right. Okay. Should I say that? No. Tax return. No. I'm no, because that'll be on the. No. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah, not compliant. Put that in there. Um, that'll be in but, the compliance okay. piece. So then, Let's, to carry on with that same thought process, process under number two, applications will require instead of should require. They will require business loss documentation and disclosure. I was just thinking of this because it's recommendations. I know, but so I just I guess I just want it to be a little bit tighter. Well you know the the yeah. jargon yeah. here. So yeah. I would go with like what you're comfortable with. You can also so use the very unspecific two yeah. yeah. applications <laughs> are to yes really require. Yeah, I, should I, is not yeah. strong enough. Um, okay, keep going. And then in the next sentence, and again, I apologize. I feel like I'm wordsmithing. No, no but okay. you need, you know, right. we strongly recommend one specific grant disbursements. Just get rid of that S. Before we cross off that S, uh, I want to make sure, you know, it, I mean, if I were an IGA employee, I'd read this and I'd be like, yay. Right? But if I were a pharmacy employee, I'd be like, what? And if I were a Fife employee, I'd be like, what? I brought that up last week. <laughs> I brought I, that up last week. <laughs> yeah, I think that I, I, you know, I absolutely don't dispute that, you know, it would be good to give frontline work, workers at IGA, I, you know, the, the, um, premium pay if that's something that Gary wants to engage in. Um, but I, I don't know about naming or... it only. I think maybe we should say, you know, we recommend making 
businesses with frontline workers eligible to give premiums. Yeah, I think that can be an, another bullet. Well, um, maybe. I, I, you know, I just kind of feel like yeah. while nobody, while nobody disputes or, you know, and, and we should recognize the heroic efforts of the IGA, I feel like the more we call out specific organizations or people in a value-laden way, the more we might disappoint people that felt that they played a role as well and weren't mentioned. And so I just, I felt that a couple of times reading this draft and I don't, I don't know. I feel like we should well, pull away we have to it. make it specific if you're gonna recommend it, right? No, we could make it that businesses that employ frontline workers be eligible to provide premium pay and leave it up to Barbara to figure out which businesses those are in addition to the IGA. Well, getting back to your point, Connie, would, um, okay, say the Fife and Drum, say the, uh, the mobile gas station, the local businesses, I would imagine they could apply for the ARPA funding for their employees. Can't they do that? Right, and that is what we discussed at the last meeting, but we don't know, we, we felt like we didn't have all of the information that we needed in order to put that recommendation to bed. So Barbara was gonna follow up with Gary because we just weren't sure if there wasn't like some convoluted thing that would make it, you know, would like the, the mechanism be something that was different from the business related loans or, you know, I, you know, I think a thousand dollars to each IGA. To general with some things like, we recommend grant disbursements to local businesses that employed frontline workers that kept the community fed in their medicines. Um, well, blah, blah, blah. just kept the community. Something right. like yeah, that. I feel something general like I that think would be where great. we got so, off track maybe was because of your one-on-one -on -one with Gary and we didn't have it with others. Right. So I think that's yeah. where we're think you know, where our thinking came from. But I'm sure it's more general. I'm wondering about the the thousand dollars each because I mean I, I just want to like is that what it is? Is that what premium pay would be? So I don't think that we should write that if premium pay would be based on some sort of a calculation that was different. And I also think that the IGA might employ more than 10 people. Yeah. So that would put them over the 10,000 amount. So I think this this bullet just needs a little bit of work to make it compliant mm -hmm. with what we're able to and do. And the other thing about premium pay is if, if it actually gets utilized under that criteria for premium pay, I have to report on all of that. Each well, person. is it really premium pay? If we do it that way. So that's why but I think last week we sort of discussed maybe the businesses would like to come forward and apply for money. And if they give bonuses to their employees, then that's between them and their employees. And it's not really this premium pay piece because otherwise I have to report on that. Yeah, so maybe let's not do it as a premium pay thing. Yeah, maybe you should just say that we encourage all businesses that employ frontline workers. To I mean, that's apply it on this. It's kind of on you, but do. Yeah, the reporting piece for this is cuckoo. But then so. how are they going to do their application? If they're making an application to give a bonus to their employees, can maybe that would be one of the questions. Did you have frontline work? Because then, you know, instead of showing, you know, a loss of $10,000, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. they could just apply for whatever amount mm -hmm. they needed in yeah, order to simplify their... because you're going to go completely crazy doing right. all that. Right, right. Why don't we? Simplify yeah. it. Yeah. So yeah, I can make it more generic. Yeah, and on my application, I'll just use that as one of the criteria. Did you employ frontline okay. workers? Um. So getting back to that word should, can we change all the shoulds to wills? Each grant within this category will be capped <coughs> instead of should we, will be capped. <laughs> And then <clears throat> under it is 15. Hmm? It is 15. Yes, yes. Nonprofits. I think we voted on that last week anyway. Did we? Mm -hmm. I think we did. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then let's see. 
Number three, the third slash second sentence, the word in between available and application, change that word for into the word through. Through application? Why? Because the, the majority of the portion of the pool should be made available through, through application, application, not for application. No, huh? that's incorrect grammatically. <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah. The pool is available for people to make applications from. Should be made available. But that doesn't read right. I don't know. That's what so, I was getting stuck to. And that's why I was like, well, they're, they're, it's through the application process. It's so I asked for the money. I, again, think that this could be reworded in a way that makes it more palatable to organizations that haven't reached out to us yet. Um, because if I were an organization that held my seat while this committee went through its laborious meetings and waited for the application because I had been advised that there was no application process, then I would read this and I would go, hey, wait a minute, what? Me. You know, these organizations get fast-tracked I don't know. You know. I think so, that if people didn't submit a letter of proposal, they were remiss. They, they were told job. not to. I mean, yeah, I specifically I said to. to people, I don't, said write a letter. That was a mistake because there are going to be members of the community that are, you know, not happy with us because some people were told, don't apply, don't write us anything yet. And some people were encouraged to write something in. And the people who did write something in are. There's seeming three like they're getting preferential treatment here to write a proposal. So here's my suggestion, because I don't think we should back off from the hybrid. I'm fine with it. I think that this could be reworded in such a way to say we've received feedback from people that is, you know, that is in the form of an application and those can be immediately processed. You know, I don't think I, I, it's the value judgment that somehow we made a first cut and have awarded the squeaky wheels, you know, which I guess is the way society works. But we specifically well, told people the squeaky wheel, the totally squeaky wheels, anyone audacious enough to send us something, although we told them not to, we're rewarding. But we didn't officially tell anyone. I did. I did. In conversation, and I am but the as official. a committee publicly, we never made a statement not to. We actually said copies. in our meetings, Barbara said, I received this piece of correspondence. And we said, how are you responding to that correspondence? And she said, I'm responding to that correspondence with a note saying there is no application process. Yeah, we received an this. Announcement. We disagree then. I was watching the, the board at the last board of selectmen's meeting um, this afternoon in uh, Darlene. They were discussing um, the uh, the hybrid yeah, uh, technology. Yeah, Darlene's going to pay for it. Oh yeah, Wait, this is that's different. Yeah. Darlene, uh, hybrid technology is not this hybrid. The use of hybrid is not. I, I don't get confused. That, that isn't the request that that's they asked for. That's not what we're talking about right now. Because they mentioned it in the context with that's our. That's not what we're talking that's, about that's right now. That's something different. Right now, we're talking yeah. about our own process for nonprofit grants, yeah. which we've called hybrid only because we mean it to be yeah. one thing for the organizations who already sent us a letter and a new thing for organizations we haven't heard from yet. Okay, so how do you wanna do this? So why don't we say that we've heard from several nonprofits already outlining what they would do with their funds. And we recommend the following awards be made to the following organizations. And I also, would suggest that we get rid of the grant justification in the table because oh, it I feels no, 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 very no. value laden to me. And uh, again, that's what we're supposed to be doing. Well, I know, but we haven't heard the universe of requests. It doesn't matter. We've heard these requests, and there, I mean, you could do similar things for others. We can't. 
we cannot shape this entire set of recommendations based on who might be offended because they didn't have the initiative to send a letter or an application. I'm not I talking about who would be offended. I think it's unfair. I'm offended Why? by it because I think it's unfair. I think to it's whom? to all of the universe of applicants who we haven't heard from yet, who have absolutely valid and equally compelling stories that they are going to submit and tell in their application. And all of that is wonderful. I think that I think that I would rather a cut and dry report personally. Well, I I think that if we're going to include grant justifications, they need to be very, very specific and simple. A lot of what's in this is sort of opinion and um, it's subjective, but I think it's doable. Well, like that's our responsibility you guys i'm so i mean you can do that if you want and but i'm sort of done with this um you can make it dry you can make it non-specific you can make it unsexy you can make it uncompelling you can make it uninteresting to the audience of taxpayers in the town it is I think it's our job. We believe in the recommendations, we should sell them. And if there are others that are compelling, we'll get them and they'll get approved. It is, this is not the be all end all, it is just some of them. So do what the group. Well, um, I think if we, I didn't know, honestly, that we, people were told not to apply. Maybe I missed something here, but. We, I think we talk about those who did and we say, but we still have openings and availability for those who haven't applied and yeah we're in fact we are for, launching an application process for I mean, the very first time yeah I mean it's, yeah we're, it's we're not still time. looking we but, never have looked. And I think that's well, really important. Say, but that's not true. Well, we have looked. It isn't. What was we the have looked of the focus groups. We have looked at what people put in front of us. The focus groups is different because the focus groups were not applications for funding. The focus groups were our requests, you know, for information. But we have not looked beyond okay. so our let's, four. Can we just say these have these have been brought before us? And we're recommending and we're looking for others now to apply who haven't done so. I mean, something just and move I, it along. And I feel like rather than I mean, rather than saying grant justification, because that is the opinion part, it could be grant purpose. And that way people get to hear about yes, well, fifteen thousand uh, goes to Marblewood. Fifteen thousand goes to Marblewood to refurbish the orchard. I and, think, you, and you can really, in my opinion, condense all that down to it's a worthwhile community benefit instead of all the rest of it's right. There. But yeah. what happens, I mean, and I don't want to pick on the orchard, but whether or not it actually is a benefit to the community remains to be seen. And that is why, you know, for these grants, I think that we, you know, we ought to say this is why, you know, this is the purpose of the grant. And we're recommending it be funded. Uh, but, but we have no idea whether Camp Kent is going to organize a blueberry picking. No, their suggestions, their ideas and that but, make the grant feel more attractive. That's the point of it. Yeah, it Do would you be want really, our recommendations to be adopted. It would be really awesome if people did what we would have liked them to do with the money, but it's not true. It's not fact. And it doesn't, whether or not they do it doesn't, you know, have any bearing on whether or not we give a grant. It would be a wonderful thing to refurbish the orchard. Well, here's my thoughts on, on, on the nonprofits. I mean, it's obvious, Patricia did a lot of work preparing this. I mean, you know, it's a lot of thought went into it. Um, for the nonprofits, um, 
you know, it's okay. Ruth talked about a preparing a three page report. I think that that's it could easily be done, you know, using this document. And for as far as um, <clears throat> for the nonprofit uh, category, it's what I had is I just put down um, under the list of how the ARPA funds, the recommendations uh, that we're using, how they're being spended, spent is I just for the nonprofits, I put aid to seven identified nonprofits. Okay, I didn't mention the names. I put that they were identified. If people want to find out who they were, who they are, they could easily look in the appendix. Yeah, but this is a this is a recommendation to the board of finance, and this piece is one section. Exactly, and it's letting them know that we're recommending seven identified nonprofits, as well as. Um, Okay, here's what I put. Aid to seven identified nonprofits, aid to five identified local businesses, applications for ARPA recovery to 20 individual residents, four businesses, and nine nonprofits. That's, those will be the, the um, unidentified people, businesses that will be getting applications. It I'm kind sure of streamlines everything. Make sense, though. And it's not. How, it, how so? How does it not make sense? Well, let's begin with 20 individuals. Right. If $100,000 is sliced, you know, equally into $5,000 grants, which is the cap, then it would be 20 individuals, but it may be many more because people may not apply for the full 5,000. Well, that's and true. That's we may not right. get that many applicants. So that's another reason that that might be very Well, you could put approximately so, on. Well, or you say $100,000 for individuals in amounts not to exceed $5,000, which is what we've said. Well, see, I'm just thinking of like when the Board of Selectmen read the information, it'd be easy for them to read, easy for them to digest, and hopefully it'll be thought provoking. I, I I think pages, I think pages one and two are pretty good. I I like it. Do you guys? Mm -hmm. I I think we should stick with this format. I think Patricia put a lot of work into it, and I like it. You know. I, so I are we going to take out grant purpose? I, I mean, whether it's grant justification or purpose, you, you do that. In municipal projects, I mean, twenty-four thousand for hybrid meeting at Chrome, ten thousand for Chromebooks, um, park and rec drainage. Uh, I mean, there's this justification stream the throughout this. Justification. So if, if we if was explaining why in our thought process that these these groups rose to the top, yeah. and if anyone had they did not questions. rise to the top. Oh. They were the well, people we heard from more proposals than these. Which we disqualified because sometimes it wasn't really an ask, so we tossed it. Sometimes it was a duplicate ask, so we tossed it. But every single organization that we heard from, we awarded, we said that they could go through this hybrid process because they've That's already true. applied. So they did not rise to the top. They rose to the top in that we we really mm -hmm. liked what we heard from Can them we and we thought say, they deserved hey, it. Hey, folks. <laughs> Can we just say these are those that we have received and we are open to applications from everyone else. And I mean, that's your concern. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So can't we just simply say that? So should we do, should we get, a, should we do away with the grant purpose column entirely or should we have something basic? So that says like Ken Chamber of Commerce, replace some funds lost as a result of I think people would like to read those. Those justifications. I do too. I just yeah. think they, they should, should be a shorter, little less. But subjective. I think that's yeah. fun. We're talking a little more to the point. Give a little information as to why. Just what it is that shows. it's going. To that's fun. How and I want to condense it. That's fine. But just then we say, just be to Connie's point. Those who haven't applied, you know, we're, we're looking. The, the, yeah, for the application others. process will be open. Yeah, blah, blah. blah. And please, you know, we're. So can we add, we'll shorten 
the justifications and we'll add a line at the end that says we encourage yeah, all cool. other nonprofits mm -hmm. to, to submit proposals or applications yeah. for those who feel like ARPA grants. They are, you know. Mm -hmm. So, so what I would do is like, for example, the library. Kemba Memorial Library, $5,000 to purchase outdoor heaters and streaming content from Canopy. And, you know, and-, and yeah, I know how to share them. Yeah, so just like what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and just one little wordsman. It's Housatonic Youth Service Bureau. <laughs> it's not service. Okay. Just- that on that board forever. Right. And the organization for the orchard should be Marblewood School. They would be the grantee. Right. There is no separate organization for the orchard. So we're saying Marblewood School. Yeah, I think school, school because of the, you know, people are thinking we're giving it to Marblewood School. Well, but not. then they really we are they for the them. purpose of offering it's something to the community. Yes. Which I think it, that's legitimate. I mean, that is okay, what we're going to. Yeah. Okay, so I didn't have any wordsmith in there. I went straight down to number D. Well, okay. let's talk about um, 4A. In the meeting that you one, want. One, I'm sorry, can we just go back? HBA's proposal. And that, that is not. What park are they talking about? This just it, when you get into purpose on this, just say, just make a five word thing on what it actually is for, because it's, it's for their VO the program. The it, what? It's for their VO program, Where? which is um, it monitors um, sites that are often used by the public on the Housatonic River. But it, it's more like unauthorized sites. They, these are river ambassadors who go and interface with visitors like at Bulls oh, Bridge. Right, yeah, okay. but, but so it's say first, that yeah. again, Connie. It's the... Well, I can, if you want, I can come up with it. I'll reread their letter so that I can... I mean, but they know, go all over. These something. ambassadors... All right, I'll just over. do it from their letter. Okay. They, yes, but they made... Um, they made their application like some of the other organizations to each of the towns. So they have okay, made their so application to each of the river to... towns. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. I just was... Remember last year, two people drowned going down. Yeah. I, mean, I, I understand really... the program and all. I just didn't know where who's Tonic Valley HBA came in on this. Okay. So okay. back to back to municipal for it. Yeah. Um, so my suggestion is. And when you're going to have to concur on this or not, but if it's the Board of Selectmen's intent to actually utilize funding out of the current year's budget to satisfy that request, then we take that recommendation right out of there. Which one are we? The 24000 for the purchase of the hybrid meeting equipment. Uh, what I didn't watch the meeting. So Is it I don't chicken and egg? What like whatever comes first, right? It's... But that should well, be the we, we we said we, she could, if needed, give some of her budget money mm -hmm. to do it because a law was passed two weeks ago that all town meetings have to be hybrid. So it's absolutely necessary for this equipment to advance the purchase of that. Mm -hmm. Darlene offered to use money from her budget, although mm -hmm. that's not the ideal situation. To get it through ARPA is the ideal situation, and and those funds don't cover the whole project. So, Darlene's funds don't. Darlene's Darlene funds do not cover the whole. She thing. has like seventeen. She had me look it up. Oh, she's seventeen. That like even, seventeen grand. That's even more than Darlene. Oh. I, I was quoted as thirteen today. Um, so, so well, maybe she pulled back on so, some so of the, it. I don't know because it's from more than one place. The hybrid we discussed today was twenty thousand. No more than okay. that. So, so are we keeping this in or do you want Darlene to stay? I I think you should keep it in because if Darlene yeah, doesn't I, have to use her budget money, yeah, it would be better. On that. I don't know. The um, problem with Darlene using her budget money is it has to be done by June 30. This way, right. yeah. this is not a lot. Could could not like well, an urgent money. request be made? 
to, for this front for the laptop funding from the ARPA fund? But I suppose it could, but I think it'd be nice if we could get through our process. Yeah. I think we'll be done before the end of the fiscal year. God, yeah, yes. <laughs> it's already yes. May 11th. Yes. I don't have much yes. time. You could have finishes the work and sends in an invoice. We could have this done. Okay. Let's do it, ARPA, and tell Darlene thank you. Okay. But let her use her. And we want to make it 20? 20, 20? Rather than 24? Shouldn't we just leave it? Yeah, just Let's leave, leave it 24. You yeah. yeah. never know. Yeah. But, and the only other comment I wanted to make on that page was under D where you put our town budget is woefully inadequate. Is there it a, is. well, is there a way that we can <laughs> utilize phrasing that's positive and yeah. not no, negative? I wanna like no, because that's I don't I don't shame but that's I, you not know what? I don't like it either. I don't and I don't no, like I, I really I don't think like this specific is the one we feel most that, strongly about. I just think most is overdoing it. We feel strongly about it, and I think that that. I, I just think, think that the with need the population is inadequate. No, no, the need is a population and, environment with an aging population, yes. a strong aging population. The we believe more, need more funds should be directed towards, towards the senior, senior center, center. But this, the this wolf inadequate is not a good idea. Well, there, In my opinion. there was uh, on, on the board again, the board of selectmen meeting, the last one, there was uh, Rufus uh, yeah, made a request. For the van for for, tra for transporting seniors for medical that's appointments, whole, that's and they mentioned ARPA funds. With I know, but the ARPA funding we would have to give eighty thousand to a hundred thousand dollars to do that. Yeah, you have to have special vans. You have to have special insurance. There's grants that can be written if we wanted to go down that path. We can also give some to the transit district. That's right. Who already provides that service? I don't think we need a senior van right now. Okay, so what are we saying here? The forty thousand dollars for Kent to see. I don't know. You can fix it, but please take out woefully inadequate and make it a positive type of statement. How about just but the town of Kent with the who have been complaining <laughs> well with for years? The, growing so, the town of Kent will need to direct a, an increasing proportion of its budget to seniors each year. That's and, different than this, though. I mean, that's what we need to say, though, is that you right, know, if grant, you look at our town's population. A grant to help seniors should be administered to, by social services and used to upgrade the senior center and develop the programs. And to kick off, yeah, to help kick off a, a program. You guys are such chickens. I know. <laughs> you can check out all the meanie stuff. You take all the sexiness oh, out. Now. <laughs> and then you, 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 <clears throat> Under the infrastructure upgrades, number A for the WPCA, we discussed it last week. And I don't think it's fair to put in not to fund the extension, et cetera. Just put it's to be used for engineering for their uh, upcoming tank project. I that agree. Tank, tank project. Tank, thank you. Tank project. That covers yeah. it. And new that, roof and engineering wait, projects for the new five, 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 five. Five. Yeah. The new roof and engineering for the upcoming the new tank. Yeah, the new tank project. I just said the leave out the whole project. second sentence. Currently, you should use needed improvements to the sewer plant, including 57 for new roof and other projects. I just I well, know you, you can put that, in the thing that about development up in North Kent wants sewer extension. I know that um but that is not up to us. Wants an extension. It's not up to us. Right. And you may yeah. not have yeah. agreement around this table on that. Mm -hmm. I think we can just restrict it just by saying it's to be yeah, used I on mean, engineering for the Let's new tank project. Go. Go. That will do it. If they, that new project has to pay for the sewer. Exactly. So, I mean, that's no question. I mean, yeah, they I'm have just, to pay for it. The yeah. sewer commission doesn't pay for it. Sewer is not paying for it. That's right. They better not be. They and don't. Not, no, and they, a birch hill, if they ever have the money to open, which I doubt, they'll need more sewer. But ice. that's not what this is about. This is just giving them money to for their projects. I know. Yeah. Can I don't we, think you have to worry about. Can we go back up to four E for a second? And this is again, this is a language thing. And yes, I'm a chicken. Oh, okay. But we just get decent 
fume free out of that. Well, isn't that what you want? The, the reason the it doesn't for workers, period. A, a break room at the town garage, yeah. Right. You can you put in the word acceptable. I don't like acceptable I'm, either, you know. I mean that's you know that so we're, is, we're editorializing here. I'm really <laughs> sure. Sorry, but sure. no. <laughs> I mean <laughs> Some people say, mm, this sounds good. Payback is a, is a you know, <laughs> when you guys submit yours, <laughs> the LB story. Okay. And then um, down under 5B, um, this year, it did, I would cap the sentence at a series of outdoor exercise stations in the park because it, I mean, yeah, who cares who uses them? Yeah. Like, why take it out? I just don't understand you guys. Why take it out? Because it's people do people know what those are for the most part anyway? I do. The public, yeah, the public who reads it. Well, they know what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Those who are interested, those who are yeah. well, you know, um, the approach that I used for um, you know, for the specific proposals recommended, like a press release. Just a, a simple list, short and sweet, a simple list, boom, 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 boom. That's what that's what we're recommending. So, okay. in, you know, all the stuff about, um, you know, the break room, um, you know, for the for the workers comfort and for the um, fume free. I mean, that's all nice and everything. But I, I the approach I took because we want to keep the form short. So I, I just put a, simply a list of what, what it is. Yeah, but so we have to justify a year's worth of work. And well, yeah, the, the appendices, the Patricia. Time, we have to communicate this well to the townspeople. So they read it and say, okay, our ARPA committee did a good job. They thought about everything. They thought about everyone. They listened to our needs and they put together a thoughtful, comprehensive set of recommendations. A press release that goes boom, 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 won't do that. I think though that you know, people who like exercise stations, like Ruth was saying, who are interested in it will go, oh, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. That'll be so great because it's right by the senior center and seniors will use it. And, you know, people might take their kids okay. there. And then people that don't really care or like it are going to go. What a waste of money. You well, know, like, yeah. and, and there's no yeah. pleasing everyone. Well, yes, no, no, but. And I think that no, the I mean, people my, who will be pleased sort of will my be hope pleased. Is that everyone would find something that pleases them. And you I, know, that was sort of what I was hoping. I think that will happen whether or not we do our best to persuade them how Beneficial wonderful lives. a place can, will be after okay, the first one of these times. So the word um, under six, under the third bullet, all grant disbursements to KBFD should be utilized. No, it must will. be. No, must. they must, must be. Well, we look at the, within the ARPA compliance time frame. They must be. It's not a bit. Yeah, right. does that even need to be said? I don't know. But it, I it think so. It is. Because are we saying the, that because we don't KBFD trust them to do it? Or their money as the spark and run. Right. So, so is, is does its inclusion <laughs> here? Uh, you know, does that belie <laughs> our suspicion that they might not? <laughs> no, they might like Park and Rec has had that money in since when 2016 and not used it and still yes. are asking for lots and lots of more money. It's a whole other discussion. Yeah. So on number C under six, ten thousand dollars for other equipment needs as determined. I'm not comfortable with that at all. Okay. For my reporting requirement, any grant that's issued over fifty thousand dollars, I have to list every single check that was written from okay. that grant and what so ten thousand dollars for where's their list of equipment we'll just plug something else in but it can't be as they determine it has to be specific just do we want to require i mean it's not like an application but um pre-certified pre-certified by the town treasurer so that they when they decide no, because they, they gave us that you. list of equipment and everything on that list, as long as if we say we're giving you $10,000 to buy a widget, 
then you have to buy that widget and give us the receipt for that widget. Does that okay. count for the stair chair? Uh, we're going to have to take that out. Does anyone have the list in right? front of them? Yeah, I mean, got the list? as long as it's on that list, if they already got it, I think it should be in accordance with the, because we, you know, some of it, some of them were even larger than 10,000, I believe. So why don't we take the 10,000 and the 3,000 for the stair chair and tell them they have to buy the, the shockers, whatever those are called. Defibrillators? Yes, with those, because that was on their list of requests. So 10,000. But don't they cost $18,000? Yeah, so $10,000 towards the purchase of different. No, no. no. they're I portable know. ones. They're yeah. Yeah. They yeah. Were, they want to buy 20 of them. I am something. sure that yeah, yeah. that list encompassed more than $10,000 worth of equipment. Yeah. Yeah. All right, $10,000 towards the purchase of defibr yeah. uh, portable defibrillators. Right. And then we can also put for that chair, or did you take that out already? It's, it's not. not oh, it's okay. Not in there. Yeah. Wait, wait, what? Can can we just stop here for a minute? What what are, what exactly are we doing there? We're tightening up this the recommendation. Okay, and the reasoning for that is what is what what is the reasoning for because changing things? We're not changing. Well, the ten thousand dollars was not specific enough for right. equipment. We want to tell the fire department yeah. specifically what to spend that money on because she has to account for it. That's right. I have to report it all to the federal government. Now, if they already purchased the defibrillators though, I mean, they, they could always use more. They, they had, I think, 20 on their list, I think. Yeah. I mean, I, I would be fine if they just submitted to you, we want to use 10,000 for this. And then you would say, okay. You know, I think, yeah, I'm not. I'm they not must have some kind of an accounting department there. Well, they do. Well then. What's the problem? <laughs> because Barbara's going to have to report yeah. on this very specifically on yeah. what was I would rather, if we're so going to make a recommendation, let's make the recommendation. Yeah, I think it's okay. Right down and the if line. they've already bought the defibrillators. Then they can give us the receipt and we'll pay. Yeah. yeah. They can, they're always buying more. I'm sure right. that. Right. Some of the other day suggested we have a defibrillator at the welcome center, the bathrooms in there. Oh, I did. Did. Or does it tell you how to use yes. it? Yes. Oh. Well, it's supposed to. It's supposed to get in. Okay. All right. I'm ready. Statement from the committee. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing you have to skin. <laughs> I like it. The only thing I would get rid of is a menu of, I would just say we've developed recommendations that are. Because uh, a menu to me sounds like pick and choose, and we want the board of selectmen to develop recommendations that are. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. And then can you change change uh -huh. this word sees to recognizes? Where? Down where it says it's our sincere hope that the board of selectmen mm -hmm. sees, recognizes oh, recognizes recognizes yeah. the value yeah. of the Did we decide? Oh on my God, I'm amazed. I thought you guys <laughs> were going to kill me right for this page. Patricia, <laughs> 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 I like this whole thing, but I understand where people are coming from. But I think you did a beautiful job. Yeah, yeah. me too. Really yeah. Work, and you deserve a lot of credit. Yeah. Um, did we decide just that people will have to, we're giving this to those who have already applied, and we encourage others to apply yeah, so that, that. yeah then we're going to say yeah. that yeah and do you want to make the corrections and then send it to yes. me yes okay. because um, it's easier for i have them all down would um which mean doesn't mean you can't make yeah. more changes i yeah. would i would love to alphabetize our names i don't know if that i don't know if it makes sense for well, me and you to come up front but i think that the other names at least should be alphabetized Fine with me. That's not okay. I mean, you are the chair. I I I feel that yeah. I mean, I feel like it's okay, okay. if you want to put you and me up front, but then I, I think the rest of the name should be alphabetized. Okay. And I wouldn't be opposed to alphabetizing them all. Okay. <laughs> but no, I no, think whatever. Chair, chair goes first. Okay. Yeah. I just got to tell you what happened quickly in Falls Village the other night. The selectmen. Um, recommends 
they had a list of ARPA funds and they said, we're not really comfortable with making all these recommendations ourselves. We just wanna let the finance board know. Well, the finance board went cuckoo. And now they're making them go to a town meeting to approve ARPA funds. And it's totally illegal oh, because wow. the selectmen have the authority to do it. Right. It was a horrible, horrible meeting. Right. So I just- What town was that? Falls Village. Falls Village. So I said, what if they vote down a recommendation and somebody said, you can't. It's the authority of the board of selectmen. It is such a nonsensical thing. That's what my auditor, who is no longer with us, but when this month, funding first came out, I said to her, what is the authority here? And she said, it's the Board of Selectmen and the town treasurer. That's who the authority is because this is a specific grant. The grant has its own guidelines. The guidelines dictate how it can be used. And that's that. Well, it, I, the only way it gets different is if they decide to utilize the rule where they can take it into the general fund, then it becomes the same process as we do with the selectmen and the board of finance and the yeah. town meeting. No, they just want a town meeting to vote on. So I, I have this recollection that our recommendations were to be made to the board of selectmen and the board of finance. And I looked back to try and figure out where that came from. And uh, the ARPA committee meeting minutes of August 29th mm -hmm. say, that we were going to make our recommendations to the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Finance. But the Board of Selectmen minutes that gave us our charge on August 17th, might have been 18th, said that our charge was to prepare a report and recommendations to the Board of Selectmen. So we are reporting to the Board of Selectmen. Yeah. Well, the get, Board of Finance just got in there by accident. Yeah. Get, getting back to the town, town I meeting th business. Thought it was not is that I, I always seen, thought it was the two. I, I had seen that other town, like Woodbury, for example, because I, I had seen that they brought their recommendations to a town meeting. But but is that because they took all of their ARPA funding into the general fund through the mechanism that allows it to do that, that way, because then they would be required to take it to a oh. town meeting if they took their funding through that mechanism. Um, does that mean that it depends on how the town government is set up? No, it depends on what we decide. If we wanted to, we could actually make the recommendation to the Board of Selectmen that the ARPA funding go into the general fund. And if we made that recommendation and they agreed with it, then it would go into the general fund under the mechanism that's allowable in the final rule. And then all of the ARPA expenditures would become that same process of Board of Selectmen recommendation, Board of Finance approval and town meeting. But why would we ever do that? We when we have a these lot of towns specific did recommendations. Do. Yeah. Well, yeah. they did. They didn't. They just said, "Let's go to town meeting in Canaan." In Canaan, our village in Canaan, yeah. and um, and this first selectman said, "You can't. It's right. it's moot. It, it, it is right. our authority." Mm -hmm. And they wouldn't listen. And yeah. it's going to be a, yeah. a joke. So that was one of the things I did learn. Is a lot of the municipalities did different things and treated it different ways, and some of the bigger municipalities utilized that rule because they could take up to $10 million into their general fund and disperse it that way without any. But you need somebody who's formula. just doing ARPA for that. I mean, you'd go crazy. Yeah. So to be clear, this report that we just edited mm -hmm. is going to the Board of Selectmen. This is one piece of it. There's one piece of it. One piece of it. Pieces. It's three pieces. Yes. It's going to the Board of Selectmen. Yes. Is it going to the Board of Finance? No. It's no. just going to the Selectmen. Yeah. No. But I think for it the should be available to, to the public. Sure. To the selectmen to ratify, to ratify, and then it'll be, get carried out. And, and it should be carried out. Yep. So the board of finance. I don't nothing. know. I don't nothing. know the timing. No. But no. So no goal whatsoever. To just to be yes. Yeah. Well, because we have to submit it, and they put it in that folder. That right. you so guys it will get be made public as a part of the it's meeting. It's public once it goes to Okay. Okay. Uh, so in table. terms of formatting, I was thinking that I would design a cover for this that maybe included, um, you remember the image from our postcard, mm -hmm. the books, so we could do a thing and then a square up of that image to sort of tie it back to the beginning of our process and to make the booklet look Decent. Sure. <laughs> I think we do need a cover page, so that would be great if you want to do that. We're going to need a cover page, table of contents, and then that's fine. Yeah. 
So, so like, um, okay, I so. see general question. So, um, for example, that that uh, the break room at DPW. Mm -hmm. Okay, so eighty thousand dollars. So with that amount, and then they get their bids and everything, mm -hmm. and then they find out that it's going to cost more than that. Wouldn't the board of finance have to be involved with something like that, with <laughs> spending the taxpayers' money? Okay, it he. he Rick can't spend any money that hasn't been appropriated. So if he gets awarded $80,000 for the break room and the break room comes in at $120,000, he's got to go back to the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Finance to figure out how to finance the rest of that. Or it has nothing to do with the break Or do a different project. Right? So the Board of Finance right. would be involved. Yes. In for things that were over. Because that would be. But better. that's not us. That's, we're out of it. Yeah, then. that's that's above and beyond us. Uh, okay, so, so are we meeting again next week? Too? Wait, let's let's figure it yes. out. Are we meeting again briefly to just well, look at the other We have to because sure I'm going to have to. We break. have other two yeah. parts of this. Too. Okay, so let's meet next Wednesday, yep. and that should be four thirty. Hopefully, a short meeting. Mm -hmm. We've got a lot done tonight. Yeah. Mostly this because Patricia time. got a lot yeah. done last night. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Patricia. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Done between 11 o'clock last Thank night you. and yeah. noon this afternoon. Uh -huh. Thank you. Kudos wow. to you. You Thank really you. did a great job. Yeah. So let's shoot to have the full report in draft next week yeah. so that we can feel good about that and then we will so ask. I can do the same to you guys. <laughs> I will. Uh, <laughs> wait till you see how many opinions I'm, I'm going to put into okay. what we did. <laughs> Friday is my full day so I'll be able to work on my piece finish it up Friday and put it in the drop box for everybody. Okay that's great. And then after the 18th when do we think the Board of Selectmen that'll be a special meeting? Yeah, and we'll just ask them to yeah, call it, but maybe it will be the Wednesday after the 18th. Mm -hmm. Let's wait till we have our yeah, sure. yeah. Yeah. Let's, <laughs> let's not let's yeah. not ask them to schedule just, another just, meeting just, and then play out. All of us should attend the yes. special meeting. Absolutely. Yes. If, yeah. Okay, then don't schedule it between June 8th and 16th. Oh. We'll do it before June 8th. Before, How about before the, yeah. let's get it done yes. before? Yeah, let's do that. I would love to get it done. This is gonna be a special that. meeting so that we can walk them through it. Is that Yes, and, yeah. and we're going to ask them to meet during our, our normal time, which they were amenable to before. Oh, so, yes. good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Is there yeah. anything else for tonight? Mm -hmm. And if not, we will adjourn the meeting at 5.50 p.m. Thank you very much. Thank you.